Hey guys, so this is the Sully Screw 85 computer control system setup. I've got a, I set my count, which is counting the number of revolutions to zero. I set my idle state to zero. I set the pulse width modulation output to a thousand, which is basically the bottom of the servo's swing. And then I set my pulse width modulation increase count to 10. And then I set the period on the PWM to 20,000, which is basically the length between sets of information for the, it doesn't really matter. Um, from there, I check and see whether my idle switch is on or off. So is the idle switch off? Yes, it's off. So we set our desired RPM to 1,000. If it's not, we set our desired RPM to 2,000. From there, it goes into the pulse width modulation output, which basically says output bit D1 to um, the number of microseconds that we define either here, this PWM on time, or once we go through counting, this high speed counter counts for one second. It continues to loop for one second. Um, we also start a timer and then we take and after one second, we go ahead and do a, so we, we drop down and we do a calculation. Every second we do a calculation and go, okay, what is the count? divided by three, the number, oh, I need to change that, um, divided by one. And actually, I may make that a variable um, so I can set that above, depending on what the timer is and the RPM is. Actually, I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Um, this is timer seconds. And that's an un uh, 16, so that's good. And it's that many seconds. We'll come down here. We'll replace this one with timer in seconds. And oops, got to insert that. There we go. So count divided by timer seconds times 60 which will give us the, so we're basically we're taking revolutions in however many seconds, dividing it by the number of seconds, and then multiplying it by 60 seconds in a minute to give us revolutions per minute. So there we go. And I'm going to define for now, because this, this could change depending on how fast we decide we need to update the the loop um, <clears throat> or how, how, how fast we need to update the throttle. So then from there, um, so we've counted, we copy zero to the count because we ran our calculations. So it'll start this counter over at zero. And then once we get down through there, we will go to RPM current is less than the RPM desired. And if it's less than desired, we're going to take and we're going to go, okay, then pulse switch might, uh, we're going to store in the on time. We're going to take the current on time. We're going to add the increase count, which we defined up here. So I can change how quickly it increases and decreases from there without having to change any code. Or if it's greater than the desired, then it takes and subtracts from the pulse width on time and it just continuously loops. Now, the, these velocities, they loop at 5,000 times per second, roughly, depending on CPU load. And so this is actually going to happen very, very fast. Um, as you can see, it's, it's super simple to set this stuff up, and they have awesome documentation. So hope you find that interesting. Take care.